Hi, my name is Lance Wilkins from Tracy Bressler CPA and uh, welcome to our final video in a series that we have created of instructional videos on using sales tax in QuickBooks. First video was an overview of the different areas of QuickBooks that impacted sales tax. The second video showed the setup for sales tax items and sales tax codes how to attach those to customers and how those affected the creation of uh, invoices and, and other sales documents. What we want to look at in this video is how does that all come together to create a report or a couple of reports that gives you the information that you need in order to report sales tax accurately. And that's the goal of the whole setup, the, the reason for we're taking care in the setup and being sure that everything is working correctly as far as sales tax goes is so that at the end of the process you can create a report that will give you the numbers that you need in order to create a sales tax report and to make that an accurate sales tax return. So in the last video we created two invoices, one using a new sales tax item at eight and a quarter percent for Kings County and we created another invoice for a customer that we had created as a resale customer. So what I want to do is find those transactions on the sales tax reports so that you can see where those transactions go to on the reports and how you can read those reports to get the numbers that you need for that sales tax return. So in order to do that, I'm going to go to the reports pull down menu. I'm going to go to vendors and payables and then to the sales tax section here. You see there are two sales tax reports, sales tax liability and sales tax revenue summary. Most people will use the sales tax liability and that's that's a good report, that's fine, we do want to look at that. This is automatically set to the last month, so the sample file, the current date is December 15, 2007. That's not the date of the video, but that's the date that's set in the sample file by Intuit. So if, the, uh, QuickBook, if QuickBooks is looking at the last month in the sample file, it's going to look at November. But we want to look at the current month just because the invoices that we created in that last video were uh, during the current month. And I want to be sure that those are included on the report. So this is a sales tax liability report. It gives me a column here for total sales. It gives me a call for non-taxable sales. Regardless of what reason they were non-taxable, they're in this column for non-taxable sales. The result, of course, uh, if you subtract the non-taxable from total, is non-taxable sales, and that's what we have in this column. So I have totals for all those numbers. Down the left side here, these are my different sales tax items. So here is the Kings County sales tax item that we set up in the last video and we created a couple of invoices one for forty five dollars one for two hundred and fifty dollars there's the total right there those two invoices total two hundred and ninety five dollars in total sales out of those two invoices one of them was for two hundred and fifty dollars was for resale well there it is there's our resale invoice in non-taxable sales two hundred and fifty dollars and then we also had an invoice to Christy Abercrombie for $45 that was taxable. There it is, $45 in the taxable sales column. The rate for this sales tax item is 8 and a quarter percent. If you multiply that out, the amount of sales tax that was collected on that invoice was $3.71. And there it is in the tax collected column. So when you're... Um, when you're uh, looking at this report, that kind of gives you an idea of what those different columns are telling you, what those different numbers are for. Here is all the sales tax that we collected in the month of December 2007. It's about $1,240 or $1 here. There's another column that I'll just mention briefly, and that's the sales tax payable. This just tells me the total dollars that are in the liability account sales tax payable. And you see there's almost $5,300 there. So that tells me that there are amounts of sales tax that have not been paid a lot more than just what's in December. So November's collections could be in here, October's collections could be in here. 
and that could be fine. It depends on when you pay sales tax. If you pay on a quarterly basis, you're going to show more than one month's collections uh, in this column. Now, it could also be an error. Um, it, you know, it could be that that represents six months' worth of sales tax and it should have been paid. The only reason I'm pointing this out to you is you don't necessarily need to be alarmed if these two numbers aren't real close to each other. It could be just fine. Well, this will give you a lot of the information that you need to do a sales tax return. The piece of information that it does not give you is it does not tell you why these sales are not taxable. And if you have ever completed a sales tax return, you know that there are several reasons why sales could be non-taxable, and you need to report those reasons on the sales tax return. There will be a number of lines on the back of that first page that specify, or where you should specify, the dollar amounts for those different reasons. Is it non-taxable labor? Is it for resale? Is it, you know, what are the reasons for these sales being non-taxable? Well, the other sales tax report answers that question for us. So if I go back to reports, and to, where are we? There we go, vendors and payables, and then to the sales tax revenue summary report, and again, change the date so that it reflects those new invoices that we created. I'm going to make this just a little easier to read. Um, actually, I won't do that after all, because I want, to, want you to look at this Kings County sales tax item. So here we are. Uh, this is similar to the sales tax liability report, but we have more columns here. And the reason that we have more columns is we have a column for every sales tax code that we have created in the QuickBooks file. So here again is our Kings County sales tax item, and there's the $45 to Christy Abercrombie that is taxable. Nothing in non-taxable labor, nothing in non-taxable sales. Over here, there's our resale invoice. So now we know why that $250 is non-taxable. So the sales tax liability report tells us that the $250 is not taxable, but the sales tax revenue summary report tells us why it's not taxable. It's not taxable because it's resale. Now, when I help clients set up sales tax in QuickBooks, I try to get rid of this sales tax code that is non-taxable sales, because that doesn't really tell me why it's not taxable. I want to see resale. I want to see non-taxable labor. I want to see government sales. If, if you um, happen to sell uh, items to the federal government and it's not subject to the state sales tax, I want to see the reason that it's not taxable. And that's why I set up those sales tax codes for each reason that something might not be taxable. And then I try to be sure that the right sales tax code is set up with each customer and is used on each invoice. And if I do that, then I'm going to end up with a report like this that's going to tell me why the sales that I have created as non-taxable are non-taxable. That really should give you all the information that you need for an accurate sales tax return. So I hope this video has been helpful to you. Thank you for, uh, thank you for uh, uh, watching. And be sure to check back to our... Uh, a website every once in a while as we will be creating additional videos on different areas of QuickBooks that will instruct you on how to best use the program to your advantage. Thank you.